so there are these sensors for reading electric signals coming from our body. We agreed on that in the previous episode. But how do they work and how can we use them to visualize these signals? Also, which ones to choose, how to connect them with the body and what are they in the first place? That's exactly what we're gonna discuss today and by the end you'll understand how it all works. So let's dive in. DIY neuroscience could be divided into three main parts. Hardware, which includes sensors, microcontrollers and similar devices. Firmware or code for microcontrollers, which is used for transferring and sometimes analyzing the data. And computer software, which is used for data collection, visualization and analysis. In this lesson, we'll focus on the hardware part. And let's clear things out. Some electronic knowledge is recommended for this course, but is not required you learn along the way. And it's nothing serious or scary, don't worry. Okay, so what's important to know about these sensors? Specifically these ones from Upside Down Labs. Well, they all have multiple operational amplifiers on board, which, as the name suggests, amplify or convert the signal in millivolts range, coming from the neurons, to something we can easily detect. We can say they have two ends or connectors. One is for power and output, which I'll talk about in a bit, and one is for electrodes. When you plug in the cable in the electrodes connector, you have three of them by default. In plus, in minus and reference. You measure the potential or voltage between plus and minus electrode. And the reference is put somewhere on the body like a bone, where it doesn't interfere with the part you're recording from. For the output part, we'll need an Arduino or any similar microcontroller. If you have never used an Arduino, here goes the simplified explanation in 60 seconds. So even if you know what it is, it's not gonna be that long. It's basically a development board for a microcontroller, this chip right here. Think about it as a small computer with its own processor, memory and storage integrated, that you can program to do what you want. Of course it's nowhere near the computer, it's much less powerful, but you get the point. It has multiple input-output pins, which can be used for connecting something like sensors for input and other electronics for output. There's multiple types of these sensors that serve a specific function, and two main types are digital and analog. Digital ones can input or output digital signals, so either a 1 or a 0, 5V or 0V. Analog ones are connected to something called ADC, or Analog to Digital Converter. It converts a voltage between 0 and 5 volts to a value between 0 and 1023. For example, 2.5 volts will give a value of 512, or 1024 possible values, including 0 divided by 2. Ok, based on that, for these sensors we need to use analog pins. I'm going to show the connections with the BioMP Shipil, but it's almost the same with the other ones too. For power, we connect VCC to 5 volts on the Arduino and GND to ground on the Arduino. Output goes to one of the analog pins, as I said. Just remember which one. A0 is often used. Then, based on what you want to detect, you place electrodes according to these pictures. Nice. Now what's left to do is to work on some code, which we'll cover in the next lesson. Please tell us in the comments if you got inspired or excited, and share some ideas if you have them already. And by the way, if you're new here, I'm Alexa, and this is a DIY Neuroscience course. Here's the playlist if you missed something, here's the next one, and here's where you subscribe so you don't miss anything in the future. Have a good day. See you.